The chair would like to address the August Chamber. Please take your seats. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Esteemed deputy speakers, the honorable majority leader, the respected minority leader, distinguished colleagues, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm very delighted today to reconvene the secular and regular session of the 19th Congress within these cherished walls that represent the voice and will of our people. As we gather after a much needed respite, we return imbued with fresh insights from our constituents and a gratifying review of our groundbreaking strides from the first regular session. The 19th Congress's inaugural session will be etched in the annals of our history. Amidst adversities, we emerge triumphant transforming stumbling blocks into stepping stones, coming together in a shared purpose and commitment to establish an unparalleled record of priority measures that directly uplift the lives of our citizens. As we usher in this new session, we stand poised to maintain and amplify our fostered momentum. The path ahead may appear formidable, yet we recall that, and I quote, the difficult we surmount forthwith, the impossible requires a bit more time. Guided by this indomitable spirit of resilience, unity, dedication, we march confidently forward in our legislative journey. We are here to respond to the call for public service, to build a more just, prosperous, and equitable society for our people. Our mission is to uphold the Constitution, protect our democracy, and ensure every citizen's welfare. We must remember that our duties extend beyond the walls of this august chamber. We are elected to serve, listen, and represent our constituents' voices. Our task is not only to legislate, but to educate, guide, and inspire. Hence, as we move forward, let us remain steadfast in our commitment to transparency, accountability, and the tireless pursuit of the public welfare. The first regular session's accomplishment bear testament to our collective will and determination. We have raised the standards and the expectations are high. Yet we are not daunted, we are inspired. We are not simply lawmakers, but nation builders and champions of the Filipino people. Reconvening for the second regular session, I borrow wisdom from our esteemed president, Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr., who asserts, and I quote, to forge significant progress, we must summon the bravery to envisage the change, the fortitude to strive for it, and the unity to materialize it. Your relentless devotion and unyielding efforts have launched us towards addressing the urgent challenges of our era and enacting impactful legislation. Now, we must ensure this momentum propels us further. Our solemn pledge is to continue championing the change our beloved nation so earnestly requires. In our pursuit, we remain steadfast focusing on the 20 legislative measures approved during the second Legislative Executive Development Advisory Council LEDAC meeting. Our unwavering aim is to realize them before the year ends. We stay committed to spurring economic growth, alleviating poverty, augmenting healthcare services, and fostering job opportunities for our fellow countrymen. And these measures include one, the amendments to the BOT law or the Public-Private Partnership Bill. Two, the National Disease Prevention Management Authority. Three, the Internet Transactions Act or the e-commerce law. Four, Health Emergency Auxiliary Reinforcement Team, now known as the HEART Act. 
formerly the Medical Research Corps. Five, the Virology Institute of the Philippines. Six, the ROTC and National Service Training Program. Seven, revitalizing the salt industry. Eight, the valuation reform. Number nine, e-government and e-governance. And number 10, the ease of paying taxes. Equally important priority measures that we strive to pass this year are the number one, National Government Right Sizing Program, two, the Unified System of Separation, Retirement, and Pension of Military and Other Uniformed Personnel, the MUPs, three, LGU Income Classification, four, the Waste to Energy Bill, five, the new Philippine Passport Act, six, the Magna Carta for the Filipino seafarers, eight, the amendments to the Anti-Agriculture Smuggling Act, Nine, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas endorsed bank deposit secrecy. And ten, the Anti-Financial Account Scamming Act, the AFASA bills. We face the remaining bills in the LEDAC priority list with enthusiasm and optimism. Steadfast in our determination to transform these initiatives into concrete laws for the benefit of our fellow Filipinos. In the second regular session, we renew our dedication and passion honoring our pledge to amplify investment prospects for domestic and foreign investors alike through the Mahalika Investment Fund and other initiatives aimed at accelerating our nation's development. In this endeavor, we are fortunate to have a strong collaboration with President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr., whose leadership and guidance have been instrumental in our efforts to foster an environment that encourages economic growth and invites both local and international investments. His aspiration for a prosperous Philippines aligns with the objectives of this Congress, which seeks to achieve. And I am confident that together we can forge a flourishing path for the Filipino people. One of our priorities and a key aspect to upgrade and modernize our infrastructure is the strengthening of our public-private partnership scheme. This powerful tool enables us to harness the expertise, innovation, and resources of the private sector and combine it with the reach, stability, and public purpose of government. By leveraging the expertise and resources of the private sector, we can accelerate the development of vital transportation networks, energy systems, and digital infrastructure that are essential for a thriving economy. It is equally imperative to address the issues confronting our agricultural sector in the soonest possible time. We will redouble our efforts to stop the smuggling of rice, sugar, and onions, which harms our farmers' competitiveness and disrupts the agricultural value chain. We shall safeguard our farmers' interests, ensure equitable market conditions, and foster sustainable farming methods to ensure our nation's food security. In addition to our priority measures and in line with President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr.'s commitment to sustainable fisheries, we will increase the existing strategic agriculture and fisheries development zones. These zones will not only reinforce our fight against illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, but also promote responsible fishing practices, safeguard our marine resources, and support the livelihoods of our fisherfolk. We also recognize the significance of reassuring foreign businesses about our investor-friendly policies. We will actively engage in discussions and cooperate with the global business community to create an international business environment in our country. We recognize the potential that such collaborations have in e stimulating economic and advancement and job creation for our citizens. As we move forward, we have a robust pipeline of reforms designed to spur our nation's economic development further we are dedicated to enacting laws that will remove obstacles, foster innovation, and support industries that have the potential to drive sustainable growth and development. The tangible change our previous session fostered represents merely the commencement of what we can achieve, that our accomplishments not represent a culmination, but a catapult launching us towards loftier goals. Let us never cease in our pursuit of excellence exemplifying the will of the people in our every endeavor.
and we continue to honor the unity and collaboration that underpinned our previous session and despite diverse views, our collective commitment to the common good prevailed, culminating in beneficial resolutions for our nation. And I am assured that we will rise to the occasion, bolstered by our shared vision of a united and inclusive House of Representatives and our steadfast commitment to the Filipino people. May this session stand as a further testament to our capability and dedication as a people's lawmakers. Let us labor to sustain our gains, continue to work tirelessly, and strive to realize our shared dreams for our nation. Let us retain the momentum of the 19th Congress and strive to make it one of the most productive and impactful in our history. Once more, congratulations on the remarkable achievements of the first regular session. A heartfelt thank you to you all. Mabuhay ang Pilipinas. Mabuhay ang sabayang Pilipino. Mabuhay tayong lahat. The Secretary General will now call the role of members of the House of Representatives elected from the legislative districts and apportioned among the provinces, cities, municipalities, and the party list organizations. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. May I, call, may I now call on my Deputy Secretary General Dave Amorin to do the roll call of the House members. Roll call of members, honorable representatives from the National Capital Region, City of Caloocan, 1st District, Honorable Oscar G. Malapitan. 2nd District, Honorable Mary Mitzi L. Cahayon Uy. 3rd District, Honorable Dean Asistio. City of Las Piñas, Lone District, Honorable Camille A. Villar. City of Makati, 1st District, Honorable Romulo Kid Peña Jr. 2nd District, Most important pieces of legislation do not trend nor scream headlines, but at the end of the day, these proposals are what the country needs. Like what EDCOM 2 of Senator Win Gachalian is doing, which is diagnosing what ails our schools so that when it comes to teaching our young, they will not be the last, the least, and the lost. Higher education, Senator Cheese Escudero has also brought a to the plenary, a raft of bills that will raise the competency of our graduates in a highly competitive world. Senator Bong Revilla has been championing teachers' causes, and the House should act on his teaching supplies allowance bill. Senator Sani Angara has the energy of a startup tech in finding ways to ignite the full potential of our nation's creative industries. Senate President Pro Tem Lauren Legardas tapestry of art and cultural initiatives, which together with their quilt of environmental initiatives, should comfort us in this climate of constant change. Oo nga, tapos na ang COVID health emergency. Pero patuloy ang trabaho nila Senator Bongo at Senator Pia Cayetano na pagandahin ang public health system. And for Senator Pia, in her work as Chair of Sustainable Development and Futures Thinking, fits the description of a statesperson, of one who thinks of the next generation and not of the next election. Senator Jingoy Estrada is busy on two defense fronts, military and labor. The first to protect our sovereignty against threats, and second, the second to guard our working man's rights from being eroded. Another good one, as they are both good, another good one of a lawmaker Senator JV is likewise juggling three major concerns adeptly empowerment of local governments, housing for the people, and on the economic front, the public private partnership bill. Patuloy naman ang pagsisikap ni Senator Robin Padilla upang ang karapatan ng mamamayan 
sa malayang impormasyon at ng mga kapatid nating Muslim at Indigenous Peoples sa kaunlaran ay matugunan natin. Ang ganong sipag ay naipakita din ni Senator Lito Lapid sa maraming usapin pero lalo na sa mas masalimuot na mga isyu na sakop ng kanyang Committee on Games and Amusements. Senator Mark Villar has brought to this chamber the nobility of his work ethic, cool, calm, and collected, as we, which we saw when he was defending the Maharlika Investment Fund. A Senate without fiscalizers loses its potency and forfeits its credentials as a democratic body. In our Minority Leader Coco Pimentel and Deputy Minority Leader Risa Ontiveros, we find a vigilant opposition who do not obstruct but critique constructively their inputs resulting in better laws. And the person on the floor, the floor umpire and consensus builder who traffics these bills and resolutions in one seamless assembly line, shepherding them from committee to plenary, is our distinguished majority floor leader, Joel Villanueva, who's celebrating his anniversary today. Today, we open regular session the way it has been set by tradition and by the Constitution, by listening to the President assess the nation and account himself. This reckoning should give us bearing on where we are now and where we should be heading, of work done and promises yet to be redeemed. His take on things may differ with us. His can be rosy, ours can be restrained, or in certain issues we may be upbeat and he will be subdued. But we do agree on the most important point, that the Senate has a major role to play in conquering the challenges before us. As expected, the President will use the pulpit this afternoon to dare us to act on his wish list. And like the men and women who sat in this chamber before us, let us respond in true Senate fashion. We will improve the bills before we approve them. We will purge the bad provisions and replace them with the good. But the Senate is not a mere processor of policies originating from the other branch. We also nurture our own, whether bills with far-reaching effects that overall systems to help people burdened by rules that are too old or too many, or bills that bring fast-acting relief to those who are in distress, victims of disasters, for example, and the number, the number of which is growing. In tackling bills, let us bear in mind that these are not the President's request, but the people's request. Some of these may not be what we want, but they are what the country needs. To a people scarred by the recent pandemic, never must, be, never must we be caught flat-footed again. Let us pass the bills creating the Center for Disease Control, Virology Institute of the Philippines, and the Medical Reserve Corps. To farmers who feed other people but cannot feed their own, let us pass a stronger anti-agricultural smuggling law that will flood that, so that the flood of imports rather will not drown the crops that they grow. To taxpayers burdened by tax rules too complicated, inflicted by men who can change them at will, let us pass the ease of paying taxes bill. To the land suffocated by garbage, let us pass the Waste to Energy Bill so that trash can power the very homes where it came from. To seafarers battling the elements, loneliness, unsafe working conditions, let us pass a Magna Carta that will serve like a safe harbor that will protect them. To people looking for jobs, let the National Emp Employment Action Plan be the guide towards gainful employment in which fair work is rewarded with fair play. To those who toil starvation wages, let us put ourselves in their shoes, provide relief for their families, and pass the long-awaited across-the-board legislative wage hike. To a citizenry which, in, which, is, which the internet is a boon, let us end the bane of bureaucratic red tape, and like an app, e-governance act is in need of an update. To consumers who source goods online, let us firewall them against scams which the Internet Transaction Act will put up. Let us debug the commerce platform with its boodle virus. To a country whose sovereignty has been disrespected, 
we will pass a bill that will modernize our defenses. Marami pang batas na kailangan pandayin. Sampo lang po ang ating binanggit, and we have our plate full and our calendars filled. On top of this is the 2024 national budget, which we will scrutinize minutely from morning to midnight, as it has been in the past, which can because we senators are champion multitaskers. Every measure bound for the president's desk will pass through. They are either paid by taxes we pay today or left to our children to settle whose future has been mortgaged. We will keep the faith in an independent Senate, but with independence comes the grit to make the hard decisions. We will sail against the wind, so to speak, even meeting headlong the gust of public opinion and to stay the course for as long as we know that we are right. So those unpopular but correct we will defend. The plenary's mood should not be dictated by any political weather vane. We will respect the collegial nature of our institution, and we will seek consensus and compromise whenever possible, or divide the House if needed. We will debate because a legislature which no longer does ceases to be the country's highest deliberative body. The Senate will remain a civic space a safe civic space where anyone can come to market his or her views. And how do we measure the value of our labors and the common good of our policies that we've created? We will measure growth not in terms of gross values of wealth created, but in terms of houses built and energized, of meals on tables, of students with diplomas, of employees with decent jobs and livable wages, of crime rates reduced, of the bounty of farm harvest, of faster internet speed, of reasonable market prices of goods, or shorter commuting time. Hindi ito Senado na lunod sa numerong walang saysay o lutang sa katotohanan. Sa halip, lubog tayo sa taong bayan na siyang nagbibigay lakas sa institusyong ito. Suklian natin ang kanilang tiwala ng tunay na serbisyo ng tapat ng panunungkulan, ng totoong pagpapaliwanag ng mga bagay, ng tapang sa pagwawasto ng mali. Sa tulong ng Diyos at bayan, magtatagumpay tayo. Mabuhay ang Senado, mabuhay ang Sambayanan Pilipino. Thank you very much. George Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. You are, our, you are our inspirational leader. At this juncture, Mr. President, ladies, Mr. President, before we uh, suspend the uh, session, may we request our colleagues to uh, remain at the session hall for the photo session. And uh, Mr. President, there being no further business, I move that we suspend the session until 4 o'clock this afternoon, at which time... Uh, we shall reconvene at the session hall of, this ho of the House of Representatives to hear the State of the Nation address of President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. in a joint session of both Houses of Congress. And when we adjourn the joint session, the session of the Senate shall be considered adjourned until tomorrow, July 25, 2023, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Is there any objection to the motion of the Majority Floor Leader? There being none, the motion is approved. The session is suspended until 4 o'clock this afternoon for the joint session of Congress. The members of the Senate are advised to proceed to and be seated at the session hall of the House of Representatives by or before 3.30 p.m. After the joint session, the session of the Senate shall be considered adjourned until tomorrow, July 25, 2023 at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The session is now suspended. Until 4 o'clock this afternoon, God bless us all. Thank you, Mr. President.
2022 and for this purpose may we direct the secretary general to read the title and text of the resolution is there any objection the chair hears none consideration of house resolution number 1122 is now in order the secretary general is instructed to read the title and the text of the resolution thank you mr speaker house resolution number 1122 Resolution informing the Senate that a quorum being present, the House of Representatives has entered upon the exercise of its functions. Resolved, as it is hereby resolved by the House of Representatives, that the Senate be informed that a quorum being present, the House of Representatives has entered upon the exercise of its functions. Adopted, signed, Manuel Jose Manix M. Dalipe, Majority Leader, and Marcelino C. Labanan, Minority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the adoption of House Resolution Number 1122. There is a motion to adopt House Resolution Number 1122. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The resolution number 1122 is adopted. Majority leaders recognized. Mr. Speaker, I move for consideration of House Resolution number 1123. And for this purpose, may we direct the Secretary General to read the title and text of the resolution. Is there an objection? The chair hears none. Consideration of House Resolution number 1123 is now in order. The Secretary General is instructed to read the title and the text of the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. House Resolution number 1123. Resolution informing His Excellency Ferdinand Romualdez Marcos Jr. President of the Republic of the Philippines, that the House of Representatives has entered upon the exercise of its functions. Resolved, as it is hereby resolved by the House of Representatives, that His Excellency Ferdinand Romualdez Marcos Jr., President of the Republic of the Philippines, be informed that the House of Representatives has entered upon the exercise of its functions. Adopted, signed, Manuel Jose Manix M. Dalipe, Majority Leader, and Marcelino C. Libanan, Minority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the adoption of House Resolution Number 1123. There is a motion to adopt House Resolution Number 1123. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. House Resolution Number 1123 is adopted. The majority leaders recognized. Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration of House Concurrent Resolution Number 15. And for this purpose, may we direct the Secretary General to read the title and the text of the concurrent resolution. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. Consideration of House Concurrent Resolution Number 15 is now in order. The Secretary General is instructed to read the title and the text of the concurrent resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. House Concurrent Resolution Number 15. Concurrent resolution providing for the Senate and the House of Representatives to hold the joint session to hear the message of the President of the Republic of the Philippines. Resolved by the House of Representatives, the Senate concurring that both Houses of Congress of the Republic of the Philippines hold the joint session on Monday, July 24, Year 2023 at 4 o'clock in the afternoon at the session hall of the House of Representatives to hear the message 
of the President of the Republic of the Philippines. Adopted, signed, Manuel Jose Manix M. Dalipe, Majority Leader, and Marcelino C. Libanan, Minority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the adoption of House Concurrent Resolution Number 15. There is a motion to adopt House Concurrent Resolution Number 15. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. House Concurrent Resolution Number 15 is adopted. The majority leaders recognized. Mr. Speaker, in order to give the House Secretariat time to transmit to the Senate the copies of the resolutions we have just adopted and until we have received messages from the Senate of the resolutions they have adopted, I move for the suspension of the session. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The session is suspended. The session is assumed. The Honorable Majority Leader is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I move that we proceed with the reference of business. And for this purpose, may we direct the Secretary General to read the title of the resolution on first reading and the messages from the Senate. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the consideration of the reference of business is now in order. The Secretary General is directed to read the title of the resolution on first reading and the messages from the Senate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. House Resolution Number 1126, entitled Resolution Expressing the Strong Support and Solidarity of the House of Representatives with the Republic of Korea in commemoration of the 10th United Nations Forces Participation Day and the 70th anniversary of the Korean Armistice Agreement on July 27, 2023. To the Committee on Rules, Secretary General. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Messages from the Senate. Message dated July 24, 2023, informing the House that the Senate on even date adopted Senate Resolution Number 681 entitled Resolution informing the House of Representatives that a quorum is present in the Senate and that this body has entered upon the exercise of its functions for the second regular session of the 19th Congress of the Philippines. And the Senate Resolution Number 682, entitled Resolution Informing President Ferdinand Romualdez Marcos Jr. that a quorum is present in the Senate and that this body has entered upon the exercise of its functions for the second regular session of the 19th Congress of the Philippines. To the archives. <laughs> Secretary General. Um, message dated July 24, 2023 informing the House that the Senate on even date 
adopted Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 12, entitled Concurrent Resolution Creating a Joint Committee of the Senate and the House of Representatives to notify the President of the Philippines that Congress now convene for its second regular session of the 19th Congress of the Philippines is ready to hear his State of the Nation address in a joint session of both houses. To the calendar of business for the day, the majority leaders recognized Mr. Speaker, I move for consideration of Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 12, and for this purpose, may we direct the Secretary General to read the title and text of the Concurrent Resolution. Is there any objection? The Chair hears none. Consideration of Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 12 is now in order. The Secretary General is instructed to read the title and the text of the Concurrent Resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 12. Concurrent Resolution Creating a Joint Committee of the Senate and the House of Representatives to notify the President of the Philippines that Congress now convene for its second regular session of the 19th Congress of the Philippines is ready to hear his State of the Nation address in a joint session of both houses. Resolved by the Senate, the House of Representatives of the Philippines concurring that a committee of five members led by the Senate President join a committee of the House of Representatives to notify the President of the Philippines that Congress now convene for its second regular session of the 19th Congress of the Philippines is ready to hear his State of the Nation address in a joint session of both houses. Adopted, signed, Joel Villanueva, Senator. Mr. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the adoption of Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 12. There's a motion to adopt Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 12. All those in favor say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 12 is adopted. The majority leaders recognized. Mr. Speaker, in view of the adoption of Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 12, authorizing the creation of a joint committee of both houses to notify the President of the Philippines that Congress is convened and ready to hear his message on the part of the House, I move that the following be appointed to the Joint Committee. The Honorable Aurelio D. Gonzalez, Jr. The Honorable Salvador A. Plato. The Honorable Jaime D. Coanco. The Honorable Ferdinand Alexander Araneta Marcos. The Honorable Marlene Primicias Agabas, and the Honorable Paul Ruiz Daza. Is there any objection? The Chair hears none. The members of the House of Representatives so named are hereby appointed to the Joint Committee and are requested to immediately discharge their responsibility. The Majority Leaders recognized. Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration of House Resolution Number 1126. And for this purpose, may we direct the Secretary General to read the title of the resolution. Is there any objection? The Chair hears none. The consideration of House Resolution Number 1126 is now in order, and the Secretary General is instructed to read the title of the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. House Resolution Number 1126, Resolution Expressing the Strong Support and Solidarity of the House of Representatives with the Republic of Korea in commemoration of the 10th United Nations Forces Participation Day and the 70th anniversary 
of the Korean Armistice Agreement on July 27, 2023. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the adoption of House Resolution Number 1126. There's a motion to adopt House Resolution Number 1126. All those in favor say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. House Resolution Number 1126 is adopted. The majority leaders recognized. Mr. Speaker, we have received a report from the notification committee that the president has been informed that Congress will convene in a joint session at 4 o'clock this afternoon to hear his State of the Nation address. Mr. Speaker, we wish to remind the members of this August Chamber that all of us must be here an hour before the joint session at 4 o'clock. The remarks of the Majority Leader are duly noted. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, to give way to the joint session at 4 o'clock this afternoon, I move that we adjourn the session until tomorrow, July 25, 2023, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The session is adjourned until tomorrow, July 25, 2023, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon.